From Colorado's News Channel, this is CBS 4 This Morning. Hi, everybody. Welcome to CBS 4. This morning, you wake up in a blue wave in Colorado this morning, a less so across the country. This is the day after Election Day, Wednesday, November 7th. I'm Alan Janae. And I'm Britt Marino. It has been fascinating to watch. We'll have your results coming up in a moment. Firstly, though, we will start off with the Colorado eye opener. Jared Polis is the next governor of Colorado. And I pledge to serve all Coloradans, no matter your party, no matter where you live, no matter your race, or no matter your gender. We are all in this together. It was a huge night for Democrats, no question. But here in Colorado, there are still signs that this is a purple state. More than 2.3 million Coloradans voted in the midterm elections. We have some historic wins. Some races are still too close to call. A man from Frederick charged with killing his pregnant wife and two children did reach a plea deal with prosecutors. Christopher Watts pled guilty to five counts of first-degree murder, unlawful termination of a pregnancy, and tampering with a deceased human body. Opening day in the high country at both Keystone and Breckenridge. Four and a half feet of new snow in the last week, and there's a lot of smiles here in the high country. Yesterday, nearly 4,000 eighth graders gathered at the National Western Complex for a career fair. 90 companies, 15 colleges, and 30 high schools were there to meet with the Denver Public Schools students. There's more opportunity. I get to know more, learn more about what I want to be and what I want to be in my future. All dressed up. That's a sharp young man right there. Professional, intelligent. I like him. Our future <laughs> leaders, everybody. We had record turnout for a midterm election this year as Coloradans wanted to be heard. More than 2.3 million Coloradans voted. Also, Colorado has the number one voter registration in the nation. Many people proud about that. And we have some historic wins and some races that are still a little bit close to call this morning. Well, you saw the outcome of the governor's race. The attorney general's race between Democrat Phil Weiser and Republican George Brockler is still unsettled. Weiser has claimed victory, but Rockler has not conceded yet. And there you see the latest results this morning. 50% of the vote to Democrat Weiser, 47% to Republican George Brockler. It is close. We'll continue to stay on top of that one. And we'll also cover some of the bigger races and issues results in just a few minutes. We have all those results if you're interested at our website, cbsdenver.com. Yeah, you can see them at the bottom of the screen there. Let's take a live look right now at Keystone opening day there. We're going to check in with our Matt Kroschel, who is in the mountains in a little bit. Already, I already see a board out there. I'm sure people are maybe getting in line at this hour. Breckenridge and Eldora are also, are also opening for skiers and boarders this morning. Ashton, that's what you do. You don't go to Disney World. You no. Go, you go skiing. <laughs> you go skiing. The elections. And, you know, what, what's cool about this, I mean, usually on Election Day or the day after Election Day, we're not going to have six ski areas open, but that's going to be the case here. In less than three hours, we'll double the number of ski areas is opening in Colorado from three to six. Very exciting. It's very unusual to have this many ski areas open this early in the season, of course. If you're going to be at Breck today, 28 in the base area, it'll be a little breezy at times, so obviously be prepared for the chill. We're in the single digits right now in Summit County. Tonight into tomorrow, some light snow up there, and then Friday, sunny skies. Here in the metro area, we're going to overall have more sunshine than cloud cover today, but we are certainly going to feel the effects of the cold front that came through yesterday. High temperatures today only in the lower 40s. Radar showing a few light snow showers out on the eastern plains. We're going to keep it mainly dry today and tonight in Denver. But out east, we have a winter weather advisory that will start at 5 p.m. today. Accumulating snow out this way. We'll talk all about it coming up. Right now, let's go over to Andrea. Get a check on your traffic. Good morning. Good morning, Ashton. We have the usual suspects. I-270 eastbound on the approach to York. Starting to see some of those brake lights as folks make their way through Commerce City. As we zoom out and take a wider look at the Metro map, we had an earlier stall reported. I-25 southbound on the approach to Colfax. And as we zoom into the downtown area, we do have a crash reported this is at 27th in Arapahoe. I'll have your draft times coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Andrea, let's look at the governor's race. Colorado voters have elected America's first openly gay governor. Democrat Jared Polis has beaten Republican Walker Stapleton. There you see the results this morning, 52%, 45%. Tory Mason is live at the Capitol right now with more on his vision for Colorado and the issues Polis will be acting on. Let's have a look. Tory, good morning. Good morning, Alan. And not only is he the first openly gay U.S. president, he's also the first, pardon me, openly gay U.S. governor. He's also the first Jewish governor elected in Colorado. He says his victory proves that we have an inclusive state that values everyone's contributions regardless of their sexual orientation. Now, during his victory speech last night, Polis said he's ready to hit the ground running and serve all Coloradans. 
He says that as our governor, he plans to serve and protect our way of life. He spoke about providing a better education for Colorado kids, starting with full day kindergarten. Polis also promised to focus on health care, our environment and the economy. But in order for him to work for all, he says Coloradans need to work together. Diane and I are going to work every day to build an economy where Coloradans from all walks of life aren't just getting by, but can thrive here in our great state. It's going to expand the, our, our green energy sector dramatically, but at the same time control costs. I mean, he's, he's going to be a great governor. Now, Polis also commended the work Governor Hickenlooper has done over the years, saying he's lucky to have inherited a legacy of problem solving, growth and success. We're live in Denver. Tori Mason covering Colorado first. The five term congressman, now our governor. Thank you, Tori, for that. And for the first time ever, a Democrat will represent our state's sixth congressional district. This was a big one. Jason Crow beat Republican representative and incumbent Mike Kaufman. He has held that seat since 2009. Crow has received a pretty wide percent here of the votes. 53% goes to Jason Crow. Mike Kaufman roping in 44% of voters. And Crow is a first time candidate. So this one was really fascinating to watch. And we have our Mackenzie O'Keefe here in the studio to talk more about really a historic win for him in Colorado. It was, Britt. You know, we were at his uh, watch party just last night, which all of his supporters erupted into cheers when the poll showed Crow's victory. It did mark a very historic day in Colorado politics. Election day led to a historic night in Colorado. We did it! Army veteran Jason Crow unseated Republican Mike Kaufman, becoming the first Democrat to ever represent District 6. Tonight, you sent a message that democracy is alive and well in America. And that, and that you will not be silenced. In his first ever run for office, Crow ended his months of campaigning victorious. He thanked the thousands of supporters who helped him reach this moment, along with his wife and young kids. Crow also made sure to thank his opponent. Mike Hoffman and his supporters are not our enemies. This, this is politics, not war. And I will never stop trying to find common ground where I can. I wish him all the best going forward. Yet Crow says current leadership in Congress has been corrupt for far too long. He's ready to fight for Colorado on issues like immigration, health care and gun reform. And his supporters couldn't be happier. I think it's going to make Colorado safer. I think Jason is serious about common sense gun legislation and he's willing to put himself out there. Crow says his campaign rekindled the spirit of Colorado and he's ready to get to work to bring change. When I think about how we rebuild, I think about the oath I took as an army ranger to go further, run faster and fight harder than any other. To shoulder more than my share of the task and to leave no one behind and to never ever embarrass my country. That's the attitude that built this country, and that's what I'm going to bring to Washington. Now, Crow said he spent months meeting with people, so he's ready to take all of the feedback and what he's learned from Coloradans and what they want straight to Washington. Alan and Britt. All right. I think Josephine and Peter, his kids, there are uh -huh. up a little after bedtime there last <laughs> night. You know, you Cute can tell could be. they have Cute that glaze in their eyes. <laughs> though, you know, it's all, time this, for bed. all the kids of politicians who have to stay up so late in election night. Skiers and snowboarders, here's a picture for you. You can start heading up to Eldora today. Oh, wow. Look at all the snow. So Breckenridge and Keystone are also opening today. And we have our Mountain Newsroom reporter, Matt Kroschel, in Keystone for us this morning, all decked out. Matt, you're pulling off the hat, let me say. Well, it's survival out here. It's survival. Hey, uh, you might think, oh, my gosh, there's no one lined up here to be on thir first chair. But that's not the case. You see, they have their boards all lined up here where you can't see behind this railing holding their positions so they can stay warm in their cars. So that's kind of what the uh, situation is here currently at the bottom of the mountain. I'm not standing out here talking to myself and the birds. But we did catch up with the guy that was first in line this year. He was also first in line at Wolf Creek Pass, Arapaho Basin, and Loveland. He might uh, be one of the craziest people in Colorado, but uh, he says he loves it. You're, you sleep in your car. <laughs> why? A, why not? Uh, B, I can say all year long that I was on the first chair with my friends, so you're always going to be behind us. But it's a great start of the season. You know, it's we're here, we're ready, we're going to get that snow. We live here to play, not to work. 
first chair opens at 9 o'clock. We're live at Keystone. Matt Kroeschel covering <laughs> Colorado first. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> and let me just tell you from experience, there's not enough powder to make that red nose go away this morning. Three degrees there in Keystone. Oh, there's plenty of powder up there. <laughs> There's plenty of powder, Different Ashton. Powder. There <laughs> is plenty you can of powder. Just face plant and cover that up. Yeah, that's right. And it doesn't matter how cold it is. So long as there's no crazy wind, bring on the cold. That's what I say. And there really won't be that much wind in the high country. In fact, there should be mostly sunny skies. So despite how cold it will be up there, remember the sunscreen. You'll need it for opening day at Breck uh, or Keystone or Eldora. 30 degrees right now in Denver as we look over toward Elitch Gardens. Notice we have a little bit of cloud cover on top of us as we go up the hill to Lookout Mountain and look down down toward Denver, we can see those clouds just hovering over the city. I always love this camera view uh, from Lookout whenever we have this situation. Sun will be up at 634, so uh, we've got about another 20 minutes or so. 30 degrees right now in Denver, 28 in Broomfield, 26 in Lakewood. It is chilly outside. When you step outside, you'll notice it is different than it has been in the morning. For the last several mornings, we've been above freezing. Almost all of us are below freezing right now. Later today, highs only in the lower to middle 40s. That's more like it for the beginning of January instead of the first half of November. So running about two months ahead of schedule with these temperatures today and tomorrow looks even colder. We'll check the forecast for Thursday and beyond in just a moment. Right now let's get over to Andrea. Get a check on your drive. Good morning Ashton. I-70. This is around Pecos. If you're making your way from the west side of town into the downtown area, not going to run into many delays. We've had a pretty quiet commute. You can see we do have a crash though around I-70. This is Federal Boulevard northbound along I-70. Not going to cause a big issue here. We're not seeing too much slowing so you don't have to find an alternate just yet. As we zoom out, we have a couple of stalls reported. One I-25 southbound on the approach to Colfax. And as we zoom into the metro area, you can see we have a crash in downtown. This is at 27th in Arapahoe. I'll have your drive times coming up in just a few minutes. Andrea, thank you very much. And coming up this morning, it was an historic night for women in this election. Also coming up, meet our Wednesday's child.